hey super people so this is going to be some of the important questions from ENT and what you need to do is just plug in your headphones and listen to all of them because all of them have been one of the previous year questions so from the embryology ENT section pinna is derived from which brachial arch now development from brachial arch structures developing from brachial arch is one of the high yielding stuff that i will provide you but as re in relation to ent it is pinna from first and second brachial arch majority of pinna develops from second sphenomandibular ligament is derived from one brachial arch one stylohyoid ligament is derived from brachial arch 2 i will also give a small short video that will help you to learn all of them very easily in just two minutes so it is there in the course common carotid artery is derived from brachial arch 3 hyoid bone is derived from brachial arch 2 and 3 so all of them are very very super super important for you to note down and remember them lesser cornu of the hyoid from 2 greater cornu from 3 middle ear derived from 1 and 2 parathyroid derived from 3 and 4 structures of pinna devoid of cartilage is lobule and incisura terminalis a genesis of brachial pouch 3 and 4 can cause d George syndrome that is from the chromosome number 22 Classification used for microtia of pinna is known as Marx classification. Major portion of pinna is supplied by the greater auricular nerve from C2 C3. Narrowest portion of EAC is called isthmus and it lies 6 mm lateral to tympanic membrane. So it is the most common side of impacted foreign body as it is the narrowest portion of external auditory canal. So any foreign body impact impacted medial to isthmus is difficult to remove and sometimes need general anesthesia to remove a foreign body in a child impacted medial to the isthmus effective area of tympanic membrane is 45 to 55 you all know congenital defect of tympanic membrane in parse flaccida the area is called ravenous notch most common site of cholestatoma is prusex space very frequently asked Origin of stapedius muscle is from posterior wall that is the tip of pyramid. Toin B's muscle is called the tensor tympani muscles. So these are very simple but important questions which has already been asked. Toin B's test is used for checking the patency of eustachian tube. So a test to check the station to patency is called Tone B's test and Tone B's muscle is tensor tympani. So these are something which might confuse you in exam. Which test of station tube utilizes negative pressure? So again Tone B's test. Dilators tubi muscle is called tensor veli palatini. Eustachian tube reaches adult size at this age. So it is 7 years of age. When the eustachian tube becomes adult size, promontory is due to means it is a projection on the medial wall of middle ear due to basal co coil of cochlea. Diameter of round window is 1.8 millimeter. So this is something which the NBE people love to ask the numerical questions. Tegment tympani forms the roof of middle ear. Diameter of round window is 1.8 millimeter. Jugular bulb is located below the floor of middle, middle ear. That means it forms floor of middle ear. Thickness of tympanic membrane is just 0.1 mm. Anterior vestibular artery supplies utricle, superior semicircular canal and lateral semicircular canal. While the posterior vestibular artery supplies secule and posterior semicircular canal. So easy to remember anterior supplies utricle superior semicircular and lateral semicircular canal posterior supplies posterior semicircular canal and saccule singular nerve supplies posterior semicircular canal flat tympanogram is a feature of 
Now this tympanogram, there is already one video, do watch them. They are the future probable questions of flat tympanogram. That means no change in the pressure, no change in tympanic membrane movement will be seen with glue ear otitis media, thick tympanic membrane. Negative tympanogram is indicative of eustachian tube obstruction. Modified cobra test is used for vestibular labyrinth function. Appley's manual, you all know, is therapeutic for the condition called BPPV. And what is the diagnostic test? It is called Dix Holpike test. So you should Google both Dix Holpike and Appley's manual as they have been already asked. Do say do see in what method they are being done by the Google images. Site of implantation in brain stem implant. So this is one question which has been already asked. It is lateral recess of fourth ventricle. So you should remember the site of implantation of brain stem implant as well as cochlear implant. So for cochlear implant, you will write me in the message where the electrode is placed, whether it is in sinus tympani or in the vestibuli. Brown sign is a feature of glomas tumor. You all know singular Neurectomy is performed in BPPV. Brown sign, you all know it is an otoscopic finding where you see a reddish tinge U behind the tympanic membrane which bulges. It means if you do the auto, this pneumatic scopy, it will be like the brown thing, the vascular tumor behind the tympanic membrane. So, VDN neurectomy is performed in vesomotor rhinitis. So why it is helpful? If you cut the VDN nerve, it will just reduce the rhinorrhea in the vasomotor rhinitis by reducing the sympathetic supply. So via VDN nerve, it gets the sympathetic and parasympathetic supply. So if sympathetic supply is responsible for vasodilation and increased secretions from the nasal gland. So when you cut the VDN neurectomy, which is mostly done nowadays endoscopically, you will Cure the rhinorrhea symptom in vasomotor rhinitis. Tobe air test is done in lateral sinus thrombophlebitis. Crow break test is for lateral sinus thrombitis. Most common tumor of cerebellopontine angle is acoustic neuroma. Hitzelberg sign, very important one, is due to which nerve involvement? It is cranial nerve 7 in acoustic neuroma. So there is the sensory loss of the posterior superior part of the external auditory canal which is supplied by this seven nerve in case of acoustic neuroma there is sensation loss so it is called Hitzelberger's sign most common cause of deviated nasal septum that is DNS is trauma now it can be birth trauma or any trauma but birth trauma is as such is the most common artery of epistaxis is very easy is phenopalatine cotyl test is done for Checking the internal nasal valve potency, you all know. Which is the fourth turbinate? So, agar nasi air cell is sometimes called the fourth turbinate. Anteriormost ethmoid cell is the agar nasi, and which is the most con constant ethmoid air cell? It is the bulla ethmoidalis. Agar nasi is most anterior, anteriormost ethmoidal cell, and bulla ethmoidalis is most constant anterior ethmoidal cell. Samter's triad is very important. They may form a clinical question based upon the asthma, polyp and aspirin sensitivity. So Samter's triad is the answer. Carter Jenner syndrome, there will be a triad of bronchiectasis, situs inversus, chronic sinusitis. So this is also important with regards to your opsingyne and your uh, ENT perspective. Oniri cell is closely associated with optic nerve. So O for O is for you to remember it easily. But what is exactly Oniri cell and why it is important? So you, this Oniri cell is something very interest, interesting thing for ENT surgeon. Why? Because during surgery, they need to see whether Oniri cell is present or not. I will tell you why. This ONED cell, first you should know that it is the most posterior ethmoidal cell if at all present. So why it is important? Because it goes posterolaterally or postero superiorly to the sphenoid sinus. So what it what happens is posterior ethmoidal cells 
grows uh, around the sphenoid sinus in the posterior superior direction and why the significance is that sometimes while opening the sphenoid sinus you may be really opening the ONED cell that means you may get misdirected by this ONED cell and what you can do is on the lateral wall of this ONED cell there will be optic nerve and you might damage the optic nerve so that is why it is important to see ONED cell from before so this ONED cell is related to optic nerve I think you won't forget it now and one another cell called Hellar cell is there which is related to the orbital floor so it is the anterior ethmoidal cell which grows uh, along the floor of the orbit in the maxillary sinus and what is the significance of Hellar cell the significance is that it narrows the maxillary sinus ostium drainage pathway so both ONED cell and Hellar cell are very important now uh, we'll continue with the second part in the next video because I don't want to saturate you you must be having maximum absorption from whatever I am telling to you because every point is important and every point is have been already asked so this is Dr. Shivam stay happy stay confident and in this life in this last time keep your confidence high and keep the revision cycle high thank you